Okay, so this is my craft. Can you hear me? So I'm going to explain to you how I turn complex concepts and equations into art. This piece is ethos, logos, and pathos. And the ethos is represented by the tie, the logos by the balance and the logic of the two elements, and the other by the heart. I started this developing these concepts and these ideas from a class I took, where I studied the work of Aristotle and Socrates, learned about rhetoric and, and persuasion, and it kind of started growing from there. And then being the visual learner that I am, I needed to put that into pictures. So as I'm sitting there learning these concepts, absorbing these ideas, I'm doodling, because that's what we do. We, we make these pictures. I'm trying to, trying to understand what would this look like if I were to put this into an image. And these are some actual pages from my notebook. Some of them begin with, you know, just theories. You know, they're concept things, concepts like an intimine, you know, if, then, therefore. And, you know, the, the idea of there's a hypothesis, some reasoning, a reaffirmation of that, and then a conclusion. So being able to, to direct an arrow from one to another and then to figure out where it's going to go and then put that into an image so I can better understand it. There are some that are talking about a dialectic. So it's an argument with counterpoints and paths that lead to an overlapping conclusion. So the image kind of developed this overlapping of images and ideas and concepts to one point. And then there are some that are much easier, the narration. It's a, a weaving of a story. It's the who, the when, the what, the where, the why that kind of makes up who we are, how we feel, and how we think about things. You'll see there are some corresponding art to some of these pieces that were kind of built after the concept piece. Seven Circumstances, this is one that's still in development because it's actually kind of one of my favorites. I'm not completely happy with how it has come out, but it, it talks about probability, plausibility, importance, all of these things that really help make a, persuading, a persuasive argument. All of these elements kind of go into that. And then this is disoi logoi. It's a roundabout argument using different point of views. And it's the kind of argument that sometimes you'll get in relationships. You know, but I see it this way and you see it that way. So there's more of a clashing to it. So that's how the art came out to that kind of a clash of an image. And then one of my favorites that has, um, was probably one of my first ones is the encomium or the epidytic. And it's, it's like, a, like a eulogy. So the, the people are represented by the red and the yellow, and it's being raised up above others, just like you would with a eulogy. You would give high praise to that one individual above all others. And then there's kairos. Varying forces, random circumstances, almost like an accident. But it all kind of comes into one isolated event. And that light blue in the center is that isolated event. So all of that argument, all of that directing kind of came to that one point. And this is stasis. It's a sense of a change of a direction, a calculated maneuver, kind of like in, in chess. You know, so there's a semi-conclusion with a varying concept, then there's this clash of ideas, almost like a checkmate. And it, it kind of reminded me of this bishop piece that's there. The senses, you know, kind of guide our lives. There's a growing, there's a feel, there's the design, the empathy. empathy. Um, there's a little bumblebee off to the right there that kind of pollinates this and kind of keeps it all going. So it's a symphony of our lives. It's all of these elements that kind of come together to make us one. The Jeremiah, this is kind of a power play. It's a skillful orchestration of a very strong and powerful argument. It, it starts below the surface and then it builds and it builds and it kind of comes into this big crescendo. And I've painted this one several times. It's probably one of my favorites, but it's used a lot in speeches. A lot of different presidents, a lot of different orators use that one. And then there are some that are still in development. Um, there's alterity, which has this sense of self, the otherness within self. So it's very simple. But then there is the warrant. And the warrant is how to create a strong argument, how to create a strong element of persuasion you know, with backing and data and have a rebuttal to that. And then there are some that I've done that are a little bit more artistic, but then you can see the social weave and a disruption of cultural norms. And then you can see the syllogism. 
you know, which is kind of the enemy of my enemy is my friend, you know, the reliant on varying forces. Some of the pieces then started to take on a, a much heavier artistic point to them. And this is the apple of discourse. And I'm, I'm dealing with the concept of how Helen of Troy, you know, using an apple and placing a value on this apple and saying, I'm going to give this to the prettiest woman in the room. So all of a sudden you have women vying for, oh, I want to get this apple when they can go and get their own apple. And then I start working with mathematical equations, my favorite. So this is the Drake equation, which basically computes or estimates the number of active communications between extraterrestrial civilizations within our galaxy. I love being able to try to incorporate those equations in there and I use the, you know, the alien and the crop circles. And then Schrodinger's cat talks about um, Copenhagen's experiment. It's about quantum mechanics and physics. And it's a thought experiment, so no cats were hurt. <laughs> about something existing simultaneously within a closed space. And then I told you about the seven circumstances. So I started really exploring then probability and plausibility, which are supposed to be the sister graces the same father born of different mothers, and one is more likely than the other, and talk about whether something is probable or something is plausible, and being able to understand what those true differences are, what are the likelihoods of those. And then this last piece is where I really started working with equations and working backwards, working with the charts and the graphs and the angles, and then creating art from those. So taking those curves, taking those points, and then being able to work them into an actual piece of artwork. So that's my craft from an intellectual perspective, and that's me. Thank you.